Hello everybody and welcome to my weekly live show. I'm here again on Friday. I can't believe how quick Friday's come round this week. Uh, but welcome to the show everybody and welcome to everybody who's watching this on replay. It's really great to see you here and to have you here. Uh, I've got another fantastic guest lined up for you today and I just want to say before I go any further, if you are watching this, please if you can share the show. Um, it just helps us to obviously uh, be able to speak to as many people as we can, which is um, which is obviously brilliant for all of us. So my guest today, hang on a minute, I've got to work out how to get rid of that bit. Well, I'll leave it on there, actually, it's fine. Uh, my guest today is um, a lovely lady called Katie Robinson, and I'm really, really excited to have her on the show. She is, hang on, let me get my little crib sheet that tells me. Okay, so she's a professional social media strategist, which for somebody like me is perfect. Uh, she particularly focuses on empowering authors, photographers and entrepreneurs. Apart from the photography bit, the rest, that's me. And uh, she helps them to engage in online marketing for their brand. So all of this is right up my street. Not only that, she's a very talented photographer and I've got some of her photographs as well that I'm going to show you a bit later on. She's also, I don't know where she finds the time to do all this, but she's also an author of young adult fiction um, with a focus on best-selling science fiction and fantasy. So I'm very excited to have her here with me tonight. I think we're going to find lots and lots to talk about. So without further ado, I am just going to find, let's see, there we go, we're here. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of the please share thing because I've worked out how to do that now. And I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to say, hi, Katie. Hi, thanks so much for having me. No, you're very, very welcome. And as I said, I'm absolutely thrilled to have you here. So we've got um, we've got a few guests on at the moment. So we've got, oh, Catherine Price. Uh, now, this is somebody who I've only met recently at a networking event, but she's very, very new to the live broadcasting. And she hasn't really got her sort of... Um, quite got got the sort of you know the gist of everything that she's going to be doing with it yet and she's actually shown up which is fantastic and she says this is a first for me hello so she's somebody that's going to be very interested in what you've got to say um katie hi. Uh, so hi catherine um we've got a hello from sandra so hi sandra lovely to see you here hi, we've sandra. also we've got oh she says hello to me as well and we've got hello from my husband who bless him sits and watches every single show <laughs> now that is the kind of support we're talking about oh, absolutely i know and we've got um these must be a couple of people that you know uh, is that Alyssa dawn uh Alyssa, yep she's one of mine <laughs> <laughs> hi Alyssa, lovely to have you here and again we've got jessica she's mine too <laughs> oh, i'm, I'm loving you already this is great hi jessica lovely to see you so we will crack on with the show otherwise we shall spend all all evening talking to two people and not actually talking to each other which is kind of the point so yeah did you want to just do a little introduction of you know kind of what you do a bit better than what i said sure well i am a professional social media marketing strategist which means i educate people on how to use things like facebook and instagram twitter snapchat youtube their blogs their newsletters your websites to market your brand in a more effective and empowering way so that you get your fans and your clients out there to help market for you without ever sounding like a commercial. So I work very uh, strongly with social media. I work with a lot of the different platforms directly and we bring you all sorts of knowledge on growing your brands. But then I'm also a professional photographer. I do fine art composite imagery. So with a little bit more than portraiture, a little more along the lines of movie posters or book covers or things with like big graphic storytelling elements into these images. And then I am a young adult author. I just hit the bestseller list over on Amazon. I was number seven in the entire Amazon store recently. And I've got six books out. My seventh book comes out at the end of the month. So you are a very busy lady. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm incredibly busy. Yay that. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, um, I love being busy. And I, I think that's that's one of the things that I really love about what I'm doing now is that I've always got something on the go. And it's not necessarily just writing. Um, I don't do photography or any of those things, but I'm working a lot on my social media and bits and pieces like that. Um, and I just love that. There's just such a buzz. There's always something going on. It's it's you know, it's fantastic. So we're going to start, if that's OK with you, with the social media strategy. Absolutely. Um, 
obviously, if you could sort of tailor it towards the author side for, for my selfish benefit, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, obviously, in general, my first question to you was, how did you get into social media strategy? Where did that all come from? Where did your journey start? That was actually an accident. A um, couple of years ago, I started hanging out with some author friends of mine. This was back before I was an author or even really part of the book world. And I had been doing really pretty photos that my authors then came and asked me to help them improve their photography skills so that they could take pictures and put them on social media. So I started educating them on specifically how to take better photos without professional equipment or training. And that developed into, well, you do really well on social media. You're very active. You know what you're doing. Can you help us to be a little bit better and engage more fans? And so I started helping them little by little. And all of a sudden it exploded. And there was a YouTube channel and a website about it and a blog. And we just went crazy teaching people how to use social media as an author. Fast forward a couple of years and all of a sudden my photographer friends are pounding down the door because they see what I'm doing for my authors who are now hitting New York Times bestsellers and USA Today bestseller list because they are so active on social media. And I am now working with authors and photographers and entrepreneurs to teach them how to do this social media strategy. So total and complete accident, stumbled into it and absolutely loved it. I think, I mean, and that's that's true of quite a lot of things, isn't it really? I think um, you do tend to stumble into things and then actually think, this is really good. I'm, And, and I've been, for me, social media and, and technology has been a bit like that really. I've learned because it's a necessity because of what I do, but the more I learn, the more programs I get to grips with, the more time I spent with it, you know, spend with it, the more I absolutely love it. And yeah. I would enjoy that being a part of my um, business as well. Not necessarily the strategy side of it. I wouldn't say marketing is my strong point, but certainly all of the elements that go into it. I just find it absolutely fascinating. And this live show, I mean, this is just incredible that you can do this. I, I just find, you know, it's mind blowing. I mean, we're thousands of miles away from each other. I know. It's so cool the way that uh, social media has actually fostered engagement and conversation and community. It has opened so many doors for me to make friends in other countries, across my country. I know so many people and I get to have this community with people that really opens so many doors. And that's not something we could do without social media. So it's incredible the leaps and bounds we've taken even in the last couple of years. And now we get to see that play into our marketing as well as authors. Yeah, absolutely. And as I said to you before we came on air, this is really why I started doing the live show is because I just want to meet people. I want to find out what makes people tick. I just want to, you know, really kind of broaden my horizons. And this is just a fantastic way to do that. It's absolutely brilliant. So we are sort of talking, obviously, how you got into the social media strategy side of it. Where do you start? So what are your top tips for somebody that's thinking, ah, what do I do? <laughs> you have it. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know whether people do that, but <laughs> do you have a, a format or, you know, how, how do you sort of operate really? Well, as someone who is working within a specific market, you have to learn where your audience is. So I think the most important thing is to first learn what options are out there, learn what's popular. So right now we've got four main popular social media platforms, and that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Um, and then you've got things like YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, I've seen comments there. Um, so you have to identify what these platforms are, and then you have to identify where your fans are. So specific types of authors, if we're talking about the author industry, they have fans in different locations. So for me, as a young adult author, my fans are in very specific locations that may not be where your fans are. You are an adult romance writer, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So your fan base is not going to be the same as my fan base, and they're not going to hang out in the same location. Your people are going to be moms, uh, people who are our age, who are interested in that romance genre. And for the most part, where are these people going to be spending time? Are they going to be on Snapchat? Probably not so much for you, but they are going to be hanging out predominantly here on Facebook. And they're going to hang out for things like these live broadcasts, and they're going to get involved in author parties, whereas my people are teenagers, but also women our age who love to read young adult work. And we focus strongly on Instagram because of a thing called Bookstagram, which is pretty book pictures over on Instagram. So I've got my main fan base on Instagram, 
with a very strong following on Facebook, but those are different people. So I had to learn to identify where my fans were and then give them the type of content that they wanna see. Beyond that, you have to learn how often to post. So I post way more on Instagram and get huge interaction over there. And I only post once or twice a day on Facebook. And while I still get interaction, it's not as high as on Instagram. So you have to take the time to kind of learn the platforms and learn what works for you and then build that into your strategy and start doing it on a daily basis. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the difficult thing, isn't it? it? Initially, is trying to work out not necessarily who your audience is, because when you write, you've got an idea of who will read your book, but where they're going to be. And um, I think that's I'm still relatively early stages of that, I would say. I'm gathering information, having I've, I've only got one book out at the moment, but the second one's due out hopefully in the next month or so. So from that first book, obviously, the feedback that I'm getting, I'm starting to gather information of who's enjoying it, um, who's absolutely loving it, who's sort of quite indifferent to it. And that then helps you to start to build a picture. And obviously, you've written, well, seven books, your seventh book's going to be out soon. So yeah. you've had quite a you, you've got quite a catalogue for people to for, for you to pull that sort of information from, haven't you? Yes. The more you get out there, the more you're going to learn about people, the more feedback you're going to get, and the more they're going to get to know you, which is kind of the main point for them to get to know you and understand who you are within your brand. And you're either going to attract or repel these people. And the more you get out there, the more, I know it sounds like a horrible thing. You're going to attract or repel these people. And that's what you want though, because you yeah. want very strong, dedicated fans. And if people are kind of indifferent about you, you don't necessarily need them or want them. No. So, yeah, you just got to be you and then the right people will find you. Yeah. And again, I mean, that's uh, that's very much a journey that I've been on. And I, I don't want to just sort of make this all about me because obviously we're, we're broadcasting to a live community here. But from just from my personal experience, it is very much a journey of learning that it's OK to be who I am. And like you said, people either like that or they don't like that. But that's OK. And I don't have to sort of think, oh, no, I need to do this. I need to look like that. I need to wear this. I need to say this because that isn't me. And that was definitely a journey for me. Yeah. You know, we had been talking about how um, social media really opens up community. And I feel like a lot of us really find who we are and what is making us happy and how we want to dress and how we want to look and how we want to talk. And we don't necessarily get that in the town that we live in or the people that we see every day, we can find like-minded people on social media here and you can really develop into who you want to be on social media, which is something that's happened to me. I've had this incredible journey where I get to be this fancy girl that I like to wear dresses and big hats and I like to talk a certain way and it's not necessarily what local people do. And so I get this brand new worldview through social media and it's kind of great to see that journey. Yeah, I, I can understand that. And uh, we'll show you photographs in a minute. But yes, your photographs, it's that is you. I can see that in your photographs. I can see that is just you being <laughs> you. And that's that's brilliant. Before we go off social media, I am going to touch on the hot topic of the day. If um, anybody who is a business primarily on Facebook will probably be aware of the changes um, that have been mentioned this morning. I think for a lot of us, especially small businesses, people that are just starting out, people that are trying to build a following um, on social media and obviously primarily Facebook, because that's where the changes have been um, um, announced. It sort of filled us with fear. And I read the statement and I've also watched a couple of videos since. But I knew I was having Katie on tonight, so I'm thrilled that she's going to hopefully Give us her take on it, just a, a background of what it's all about, maybe in, you know, sort of layman speak and what your take on is it, it on it is and how it is going to affect us. You know, those of us that are using Facebook as a, uh, you know, as an advertising medium. OK, so here's the deal with this. Last night, Facebook put out a blog post and they announced that pages will be drastically reduced within the news feed. So that means those of us that are already suffering from small organic reach on this we are going to see even less of our posts within our fans' newsfeed, which means they will not be hearing from us as much. Now, this sounds absolutely terrifying, and a lot of people immediately jump into, 
Well, Facebook wants us to pay for ads and they get all mad and angry. And that is part of it. Yes, they do want us to pay for ads, but the bigger part of this is that they're listening to their users. They've taken all this data, they know exactly what people are looking at, interacting with, what they're spending time reading, and they know that people do not want to be sold to. They don't want to hear commercial pitches from businesses. And a lot of pages have actually used their business pages or their brand pages to pitch and say, buy my book, or buy my photo shoot, or do this, book this, spend money on me. And that is something that people don't want to see. And so they are drastically reducing that in favor of giving them things that are entertaining, that have meaningful conversation behind them, and that will start a dialogue between people. So they're going to be showing you more of your friends and family. So here's the deal for pages. If you are a small business, and we are, guys, we are going to suffer from this. We are. But if you are a page, you have to create things that foster discussion. So you should not be using engagement bait. That is uh, a question where you say, pick A, B, or C, or click the smiley face reaction for this, pick the angry face reaction for this. That's all engagement bait. They've told us over the last couple of months that they are going to start dinging that in the system. Don't do that. They want you to have meaningful conversations. So ask for opinions, ask for recommendations, start a conversation, and then have a conversation in those comments. Live broadcasting is going to help you. Using messenger bots is going to help you. You have to start a dialogue with people. And so, yes, no matter what we do, we will have reduced visibility within the newsfeed. It's going to happen. They flat out said it. But if you can start a conversation, if you can have a meaningful dialogue with people, they will show some of your content to more people. Then you have to learn how to use successful ads. So you have to understand how to use Facebook ads to market to them. And within these ads, they are going to tailor it to specific people. So they're going to get your content in front of the right people who will spend money and make that money on those ads back. So you have to take the time to learn that. But the whole point, the whole goal is to foster engagement and conversation on your page. So as long as you are actively working to do that, you are more likely to be shown. Yeah. So it's not a complete blackout as we sort of all panicked and thought. It's just we've got to now understand how they want us to work. Yes. It, yeah. It's a terrifying thing. It is, and it will be drastically reduced. But it's not a total blackout. You have ways of fixing that. And here's a pro tip for you. If you have a page and you know you have dedicated fans or clients, tell them to go to the like button and click see first in newsfeed. That is a guarantee that they will see your post. So when they get on in the morning, it'll be up in a block at the top of their page. Anything that you posted, it will be there and they will see you. People who don't click that button will not necessarily see you as much in their newsfeed. But if they have that button clicked, it will be there and they will not miss you. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I saw that somewhere else as well, actually. And I, I've done that for a couple of pages that I follow purely because I got fed up of scrolling all the way down to try and find the information. So that that is, yeah, that's a really great tip. Um, and I will put that in the comments at the bottom as well after the show, just as a reminder to everybody. Right. So thank you for that. I'm going to stop panicking slightly now. <laughs> you know what? Um, I actually did a live broadcast on this earlier today. I took a ton of questions. I really broke down everything Facebook said. So if you want more information on that, it's on my Reading Transforms page and my Cam Robinson photography page on Facebook. You can look those up and actually watch the broken down video of that for more info. Oh, brilliant. OK, well, I'll probably do that then. And I've got uh, I've got all your links here, so I will put them on, um, you know, Perfect. as we sort of go through or, or certainly at the end. In any case, I'll put them on. So I want to talk now about photography and we're just going to touch on this briefly. But I'm going to show you I don't know whether we need to maybe. Bear with me because I need to scroll through. No, I don't want that one. Oh, we don't. oh it's a lovely photo of you. Okay, so I'm going to put this full screen. So this is one of um, Katie's photos. So maybe you can sort of explain a little bit about your photos. Obviously, they are composite, like you said. So how does it all come about? Um, I come at it from a storytelling perspective, and I actually do a lot of self-portrait work in here. So a lot of, in fact, I think all of what you're going to see today is my self-portrait work but I do work with people who model for me as well. And this is a series that I call Reading Transforms. This was actually the inspiration for my Reading Transforms business. And this is flying books. So I have a two part series for this. One is newspaper dresses where I make dresses out of newspaper. And then there's the flying books that you're seeing right now. And with this, I will pose in between 
in between. Sorry, I will pose for these photos and then I will add in different elements, flying books, flying pages. Um, I will have models in there. Sometimes we do things like levitations. We've got different backgrounds, all sorts of really cool things. And I come at it from a storytelling perspective. So what is the story here? Within this series, it's all about how reading actually transforms the reader. Um, as you can see, we've got beautiful top hats and big fun dresses here. And we go through the story of how does reading a book, how does going through a story actually transform the person who is reading it? But I also have other images that I did not give to you today that tell different stories. So we've got a girl on stairs, uh, at the bottom of the stairs as if perhaps she is an angel resting down there. Maybe she was pushed down the stairs. We don't really know. Uh, there's things with girls trapped in soil. So they're half above it, half below it, trapped in the water. There's all sorts of really fabulous things. And I love to tell stories through my artwork, but I don't necessarily tell people what it is because I want them to interpret it for themselves. So I give a lot of freedom in creating these new worlds and everything I do is a new world. I call myself and other people call me creator of new worlds through my books and through my uh, photography artwork here because I take kind of things that we know and I piece them all together to create something that doesn't actually exist in reality. And I kind of love that I get to create these new worlds and express myself in new and unique ways. And I'm just going to put this one back. This, I think, was my favorite. That's my favorite too. <laughs> oh, is it? When I when I saw it, this I was immediately drawn to this one. And the first thing I was going to say is, where do I get that? <laughs> I was looking at it going, I want that on my wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So do you um, do you do? So how do you do it? Do you do prints or, or, or is it just do you sort of? Well, you tell you, you sort of explain yeah. what. I do have a couple of different products um, so people can order prints. They can order canvases uh, for certain images. I'll do things like metals, um, but they can order it directly from me. If there's a specific size that they want or a specific layout or cutout, and I kind of customize everything to people. So I don't necessarily go out of my way anymore to sell prints as much, but I am going to start getting back into it uh, because I had been focusing on my social media strategy. So originally when I started out with my photography, I did a lot of, portraiture photo shoots. So I would do seniors and weddings. I did babies. I did uh, family photos and kid photos. And then it morphed into this more artistic style. Uh, so if that is something that you want, I will happily get that for you. <laughs> uh, honestly, when I was looking through them, I just thought, wow, that's, yeah, I think that was the first thing I said was, wow. I just. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. I don't know. I don't know. It, I mean, it, art is very much like literature, isn't it? it? It sort of grabs you and you can't always explain why. Um, and, you know, I will look at pieces of art and think, what's that all about? Uh, but then you'll look, at another, you'll look at another piece of art, like when I looked at that particular picture. And I, and it, there was just something about it that spoke to me, which sounds really silly, but, but you know, wow. it did. So um, wow, I totally get that. Yeah. Um, and I get that too as the artist. There are certain things I'm like, I want to evoke a certain emotion and I'll create things that are a little weird to me and that's okay. Other people love them. And yeah. sometimes I will love something and people just won't get it. And that's okay. And when a piece speaks to you, you got to latch onto that because obviously there's something in there that has some kind of connection, some kind of story to you. So I love yeah. that it spoke to you. <laughs> I know, and it's weird that it's your favorite as well. <laughs> it really is. That one, that was hard to create. Let me tell you, because it's a levitation image. And for a lot of my levitation, it's less about composite work and more about uh, jumping up and down until you get the right photo. So that was a lot of uh, physical exercise for me right there. <laughs> <laughs> so presumably the camera's on a tripod or something, is it? And you're just jumping up and down in front of it. For my self-portrait work, I do use a tripod and a remote shutter release, uh, which is like a little button you plug into your camera and you get to hold it and you can click when you want it to take. So some people use timers. I use my remote shutter release. I actually have it hidden in that picture so you can't see it, but it's behind the book. And I would jump up and down with the book and click the clicker. And it, it's a complicated process, but it works. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. And um, yeah, as I say, the, the end product. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was brilliant. I really, really liked it. Thank you. Do you use them? I think you probably said this earlier on. Do you use your own images on your book covers? I'm just going to bring up your book covers. Oh, I skipped yeah. over that. Um, so are these images that you've done yourself as well? 
I have actually been so lucky because I was able to do all of my own book covers. Uh, so far, I've been able to do all of my own book covers, which I love. And yes, these are all my images. I don't use stock photos. I know a lot of most cover designers use stock photos uh, and yeah. they kind of composite things together. But I am all about doing a customized photo shoot for book covers for my clients. So I design a lot of book covers for people and we always do customized shoots if it involves a model on that cover. Um, because we don't want people to have the same images on their covers. I've seen so many books where they are the exact same model in a very similar way, and it confuses people yeah. when it's yeah. a different title and different author name. So I'm all about customization for my clients. No, and obviously you've got, looks like a series of four and then two series of two, is that right? Yes. So I've got uh, my Golden Trilogy, which is my young adult retelling of Goldilocks and the Three Bears with a dystopian twist. And that's a trilogy. Uh, and the fourth book is actually a prequel novella. So that's pretty awesome. Then I've got a duology, my Jada duology, uh, which has been called the YA dystopian Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So if you guys have ever seen that movie, it's yes. very similar to that because they are 18 uh, year olds who are forced to marry each other. And his family is bringing her into their family and pretending to accept her because her dad started to lead a rebellion and was caught when she was a child. And his mission is to kill her and make it look like an accident. You never know who's going to live or die and who is uh, kind of on which side. So it's pretty fun. And then the wow. other, that's a two book. That's a duology. And the yeah. last book comes out at the end of the month. And then the other series is my Legends Chronicles. And those two are actually prequel novelettes leading into the main series, which comes out this year. It's my young adult techie hacker retelling of Little Miss Muffet, Little Bo Peep, okay. and a whole bunch of twisted nursery rhymes. And they're all hackers. Wow. So that, <laughs> I, I guess that sort of answers the question because we've sort of moved seamlessly onto the writing really now. And I guess that sort of answers the question as where you get your inspiration from. Um, I'm picking up nursery rhymes as a theme there. <laughs> retellings. I love retellings. Retellings are fantastic. I'm almost a huge fan of dystopian. So for me, for most of what I do, I write science fiction and fantasy. I do a lot of dystopians, a lot of retellings. And I get my inspiration from, you know, obviously wanting to retell some of these classics that we've always known, but also from my photography. So the, the Jaded series, my Jaded duology series, this was actually inspired by the photos on this cover. So this was a photo series that I did. It was a four image collection. And I based this book off of the story or the, no, I based the story off of the images, which was pretty cool. And it was inspired by that. But then with my golden trilogy, this was actually like the third or fourth cover that I tried on this. Um, so this was not based off of that. That was based off of, wanting to desperately know what Goldilocks's real story was. So retelling's huge for me. Artwork is a huge inspiration. Uh, and and then retellings, finding real stories behind the stories we thought we knew is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love um again out of all of your covers, they're all lovely. Um they're all really they they're the sort of covers that I would look at and pick up even though I'm not typically a young adult or a dystopian reader. But I think the two that draw my eye is definitely the the one that you well the one the jaded one that you held up. I think the that imagery that you've created there with the four, you know, images very really effective. Um, and for somebody who, I I you know I'm not very good at design particularly. I I do my own bookmarks and bits and pieces like that, but I'm not um, I'm not you know not a photographer by any stretch of the imagination. So for some somebody that doesn't know um, you know. I just look at that and just think, yeah, that's incredible. So, um, yeah, hats off to you to be able to do it all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask you a few more questions about the uh, the writing process. Um, if that's oh, we've got some questions come in. I'm so busy talking to you. I'm completely ignored. <laughs> We're just chatting. Down. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter about anyone else. We're fine. You just carry on. And make a cup of tea or something. We'll we appreciate fine. you guys being here, but we're just going to have girl time. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. OK, so uh, Alyssa, um, she's referring to the Facebook thing that we we're talking about earlier. Um, so that's what you said. That's where the video is. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so if we can, um, I'll put the link on that because uh, I think that's something important that we all need to check out. 
We've got a question from Mark. Star Trek or Star Wars? What is your preference? Um, I'm not super familiar with either. Please don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. people. It's like sci-fi. I'm a sci-fi writer, and I don't know it. So, sci-fi incorporates a lot of stuff, not necessarily just like space-type related things. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I think I just watched. I just watched the one of the Star Wars ones. I don't okay. know what the title was, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you you could have just lied and said, "Oh, definitely Star Wars, love it," and we would never have known. <laughs> I'm I'm honest. I try. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Um, oh, Sandra's popped back. She says, "I'm back." I kept losing contact. I hope I haven't missed too much. Um, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> oh, exactly. I, it, yeah, we, we've just been chatting um, and I'm really glad you've come back. But obviously it will be on replay if you want to see what you've missed. I don't know where you lost contact with us, but we were looking at some of Katie's artwork, some of the photography she's done. So that's definitely um, worth a look. Um, Alyssa's just come back and said, just say Star Wars. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> she, uh -huh. She's like... She really should just organize my life and just tell me what to say because she always knows the answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Star Wars, well, I don't know. Star Wars is certainly very, very popular. Um, it is. But I'm, yeah, I'm not, not a big fan either way, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> so we were talking again briefly before we came on air about your fans. And obviously we're luckily lucky enough to have a couple of them show up here tonight which is fantastic because obviously these are people that I would never normally have had contact with so for me it's it's great that they've obviously I know they've come to see you but for me it's great to to say <laughs> hi to them and to meet to meet them how did you build your fan base or how do you go about doing that because obviously you you were saying to me you've got a very loyal fan base you've got a, a brilliant fan base they're not just based in America you've got them all over the you know all over the globe and how did you do, how did you go about doing that? Was there a specific way you did it or was it just happen? You know, did it just happen? Um, you know, a lot of it is through social media. So I'm a very active person on social media. I am on daily. So I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat every single day interacting with people. I do live broadcasts. I have live ask me anything sessions. Um, I post stories on Instagram stories. I do things on Snapchat. I make sure they're all exclusive and different. So I have different audiences and crossover audiences who are seeing different things on different platforms. And I get very, very social. So I don't just wait for people to come to me. Like a lot of authors think everyone's going to read my book and then come to me. That is not the case. I go out there and I find new friends. I make new friends. I look at different bookstagrammers and different book bloggers and booktubers. And I am very, very aware of who these people are and what they do. And I befriend them first. Uh, sometimes they'll come to me, sometimes I go to them, but I make sure that we are friends. I want to know that they are uh, active on social media and I support them in what they do. So if they have done a booktube video on YouTube, I comment on it. I like it. If they are posting pretty pictures on Instagram, I let them know that I like their pretty pictures and I interact and have conversations with them. I make them friends and then they come and turn into fans for me. So a lot of people, yes, they did find me through my books. They have come and they've seen me on my live broadcast and the different things that I do. And they reach out to me first. But as soon as I know that they exist in my world, I go to them. I look at their pages. I look at what they're doing. And I make sure yeah. I have consistent contact with them. So it's not just a one-off, hey, I see that you exist. And now I'm moving on. You should follow me and pay attention to me. I actively yeah. engage in their lives. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, how do you, because obviously you've got a large fan base and, and that will continue to grow, I'm sure. To, to be able to, I mean, I have a policy that I will always reply to every comment. I will always reply to every email. Um, and like you, I try to reciprocate as much as I can with people that have, um, you know, have sort of come my way, however they've, however they've come my way. But I guess there must come a point when you cannot physically do that anymore because there is just too many people to do that. Do you find that or not yet? Well, I'm definitely in a place where I have my phone glued to my hand most of the time. Uh, it's, it's actually right next to me right now, lighting up with notifications. And I try to stay on top of things. So if someone comments to me and I can get back to them right away, then it doesn't build up as much. But there will definitely come a point where it just gets to be too much. And sometimes it does right now. It gets to be too much and I have to put things off. And that's okay. It's okay and it's totally acceptable in social media to not respond to everyone all the time. But I do make the effort to make sure I spread the love. 
So if there's one person I see all the time, I don't necessarily need to respond to them every single time. But if there's somebody who I don't see very much, I need to make sure that I make the effort for them. So if I have a limited amount of time, I'm going to hit as many different people as possible. And if I see somebody a lot, they know I'm going to get to them when I can get to them. It's okay. But as long as I'm getting to as many people as possible, as frequently as possible, that is where that all falls into place. And they know that you're active. And people understand, you know, you're popular. You've got a lot of things going on. A lot of people are uh, reaching out to you. They're going to understand if you don't get back to them every time. But as long as you make the effort a couple of times, that's really going to matter to them. Yeah, I think that's very true. I think from a consumer point of view, if you if you flip it on its head, there's nothing more frustrating than supporting somebody, whether it be an author, whether it be an artist, whether it just be a you know somebody you've bought a, a radio off or something. Um, for you for you to have kind of given them that support and then you hear nothing or you've emailed and you don't get a reply or you've commented on a post and they don't bother to acknowledge it um i find that i, th- I think it's quite rude but i also find it quite uh, for me it doesn't it doesn't sit right because i think every single person that interacts with you on whatever level whether it be that they're a, your reader whether it be they're your friend whether it be they're your family whoever it might be I think it's important personally to acknowledge that person in your life and just at least have the decency to to let them know that you appreciate them. And then the other thing is some people get all of the attention. And from a consumer standpoint, if you were seeing an author or a famous person interacting with the same people over and over and over again, but not you, that's a bit of a major turnoff. So as long as you're spreading that love around, you're giving everybody some of your attention or as many people as possible, that's going to look better for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully we'll be friends now. I, I, I you haven't you haven't friend you haven't friended me first, so I might have to stalk you, um, <laughs> Alyssa. Alyssa <laughs> I, I did pop the comment up here that Alyssa said she stalked uh, you stalked her first. Sorry, um, and it's a mutual stalking thing. <laughs> So, we do stalk each other. <laughs> I'm not sure how we're going to do it, but we'll stalk each other somehow, and um, <laughs> we, we will definitely, uh, we will definitely be friends. Oh yeah. Um, now, the last thing I'm going to ask you, because I'm conscious we are, um, we've been chatting, and we are sort of a little bit over time now, and obviously I don't want to hold you up because you've got lots of things going on. But mm-hmm. I did want to ask you. You've mentioned in a couple of the messages that we've spoken about that you're writing a book in two weeks. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> what? Um, what? <laughs> um, that's that's good going. <laughs> I uh, I actually just wrapped that book up. I got it done in nine and a half days. Um, I'm editing it now, and that that is something I typically do. I I do write really really fast. Not necessarily. Um, I, I don't work on a deadline. I just write really fast. But this was a deadline. Uh, I had a a publisher who got wind of this one particular story that I was working on and they would like it. They would like to read it uh, for the option of optioning it. Uh, so I was hustling to get that done. <laughs> so I did I did nothing. Well, no, actually I did work. Um, I did do some work, but I did most of my day was writing and I managed to knock out 74,000 words in then 10 days. <laughs> That's going so. I'm just doing some quick calculations in my head. I think the most I've ever written in a day is probably about seven thousand words. So, so seven, however many seven nines is. So, if I, I suppose if I did that every day, I wouldn't be far off. Yeah, that that really is going some, isn't it? To just yeah, yeah. I average around seven thousand words a day. Sometimes it was more than that. One day it was less, and I had to uh, tack on some words to my daily workout to make up for it. Yeah, Um, yeah. Right around seven thousand, eight thousand words a day, and you hit right about there. Yeah, gosh, that's that's brilliant. That really is going some. And do you do your own editing, or have you got an editor? Oh no, all authors need editors. <laughs> it well, is a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I I do as well. I I I'm in the definitely in the all authors need editors camp. I I think if you want to put something out there that's a quality product that you can be proud of, you have to have an editor. I don't think, I think it's a, um, you know, it's a, I just yeah. think it's a non-question really, isn't it? Yeah. I, I have 
editors and then I have proofreaders. I have an entire team. They're actually, they're the ones that are here today. <laughs> they get all my stuff first and they proofread it for me. Um, and, and we make sure that it is as good as possible because we have had some uh, experiences with editors who were not so awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we're super careful now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's understandable. Uh, you've got a well done there from Sandra. Um, that's yeah, <laughs> for the amount of work that you've done. That really is incredible. I'm just checking to see if I've missed anything. Oh, Mark commented that you're not anyone until you have a stalker. So perhaps you could be my stalker and then I can say I'm somebody. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'll stalk you. Every day I'll show up and like, start sending you creepy messages. And <laughs> Excellent. And then I can then I can say I am now somebody because I have a stalker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I really appreciate you taking the time and um, obviously sharing what you do. I'm genuinely in awe of everything you've achieved and all of the tips that you've given me and obviously all the people that you continue to help. Um, I, I think you really are an inspiration and I'm, I'm really, really chuffed that you came on the show with me tonight. So thank you ever so much. Thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. I've had so much fun and I cannot wait to stalk you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, so for everybody watching, I will put the links to everything that Katie and I have talked, well, Katie mainly, that we've talked about. Um, so her websites will be on there. The link to uh, the live show that she did about the Facebook changes. Um, and then obviously anything else that you want to ask after the show, if you're watching it on replay, just pop it in the comments. And if I don't know the answer, then I will forward it to Katie to get the answer for you as well. Yeah. I'm happy to answer anything you have. If you've got questions, I'll pay attention and I'll get those answered for you. Oh, excellent. There we go. You see? <laughs> so what more could you want? So yeah, if you're watching it on replay and you want to um, ask some questions, please don't feel because we're not live that you can't ask them. Just pop them in the comments and um, Katie will answer them for you unless they're for me, obviously, and then I will answer them for you. But yeah. <laughs> um, so that's it. Thank you again, everybody, for being here. It's been lovely to meet some of your fans, Katie. It's been lovely to um, <laughs> have some new people popping in and, and watching and obviously commenting. And as I said, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's been lovely meeting all of your fans too. And I hope you guys come hang out with me. <laughs> we will do. We definitely will. And I shall definitely be picking up one of your books and having a little read to see what I think. Thanks. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, everybody, I shall see you again next week. And uh, yeah, that's it. Have fun. Have a good evening, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, Katie. And we shall see you soon. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.